Hi guys, in the previous video, we talked about the concepts in cost accounting. In this video, I'll show you how you can apply those concepts in the actual scenario by solving an actual activity-based costing problem in the exams. Sohi Company is considering using activity-based costing in its pricing strategy, thinking that it will give them a more detailed system. Currently, it has three products, product H, product W, and product D. And below is the information of these three products last year. So production and sales volume, the selling price, usage of raw materials per unit at $1.80 per kilogram. The direct labors per unit is at $12.50 per hour. The machine hours per unit, the number of production run per year, the number of purchase order per year, and the number of deliveries per year. The overhead cost are as follows, machine setup costs, machine running costs, procurement costs, and delivery costs. So we are required to calculate the cost per unit using activity-based costing method. So we know that the cost per unit is equal to direct materials plus direct labors plus the overheads. So let us first calculate direct materials and direct labors. So with direct materials, the given information says that each kilogram is $1.80. So we just have to multiply this by the usage of each product. So for product H, $1.80 times 2 kilogram gives us $3.60. And so for product W and for product D. With the direct labor, the labor hours per unit is $12.50. So we just have to multiply this by the direct labor hours. So for product H, $12.50 times 0.1 hour gives us $1.25 product W and product D. So now what we need to find out is the overhead cost for each unit. So using the activity-based costing, step one is first identify the indirect activities in the production process and create a cost pool with the cost drivers. Since the overhead costs were already given, we know that the indirect activities were the machine setups, the machine runs, the procurement, and the delivery. So what we have to do now is just identify the total cost driver in order for us to get the activity rate later on. So the machine setup is determined by production runs. So we just have to identify the total production run of the three products. So it gives us 36 production runs. The machine running cost is determined by the machine hours. Take note that the machine hours are calculated using total sales volume per product multiplied by machine hours per unit. So the procurement cost is determined by the purchase order and the delivery costs identified with the number of deliveries. So now that we know the total cost driver, we can now calculate activity rates, which is step two. To get the overhead rate for each activity, we just have to divide overhead cost for the activity, divide by cost driver for that activity. So with the previous calculation, overhead rates are calculated as follows. So now that we know the overhead rate for each activity, we can now assign or allocate overhead cost to each product. So which is step three. So to assign overhead costs, we just have to multiply the overhead rate by the number of its cost driver. So here we can make a table. First column, we identify the overhead costs. Second column is the allocation for product H. Third column is the allocation for product W. Fourth column is the allocation for product D. And the last column is the total overhead cost for each activity. Now we need to make sure that the total of each cost allocated is equal to this total overhead cost for each activity. So now that we have allocated the overhead cost, we can now calculate the overhead cost per unit. To calculate the overhead cost per unit, we just have to divide the total overhead cost by the total number of products or the sales volume. So for product H, our overhead cost per unit is $4.35. For product W, it's $4.54. And for product D, is $4.96.
So now that we have the overhead cost per unit, we can now calculate the total cost of each product. So taking the calculation previously for direct materials and direct labors, we just have to add the overhead cost per unit. So again, we can make a table for this. So there we have the total cost of each product. So there we've seen that with activity-based costing, we can see more clearly the behavior of each product. So this is important as it gives us a better pricing strategy. It also gives us a clearer understanding of overhead costs. And so it gives us a better decision making. We can see here products which we can either reduce overhead costs or increase production volume to take advantage of profitability. So there you have it. I hope you have learned something from this video and feel free to comment if you have any questions and watch out for more lecture videos. Bye, thank you.